All right, my friends, we are back and we are at the Audioholic Smart House. This is the first video I'm shooting from here. Boots on the ground, actually living in the Audioholic Smart House. As you can see, I got a ton of boxes left. If you think this office is cluttered, you should see my downstairs. It's a wreck, but we're getting through it day by day. I wanted to start getting a system set up here so I could at least start listening to music while I'm working. And as you can see in the background, I, I got the Revel F328BE speakers and I've got the Anthem STR separate stack. And that's the system that's going to be in my office. And you're going to be seeing a lot more of this. So this room is at the very worst case scenario that it can possibly be. There's a lot of hard surfaces, there's very little absorption. I'm going to have to address the room acoustics here because quite frankly, when I hooked up these revels in here, I was basically in disarray. I was expecting to be blown away. And initially I'm like, is it the room or is it the speakers? Well, I know these are a reference speaker. These are a world-class product. So I knew there was something going on in the room. I pulled some measurements on it. And I'm going to do a separate video on that. And you could see that this room is a wreck. But I try to do whatever I could with positional EQ. So moving the couch, moving the speakers, getting the best possible integration I can, the best possible sound using a measurement software called REW with my microphone and just seeing how I could change the response and make things as good as I can. Well, luckily, we've got Anthem Arc Genesis room correction built into the STR uh, processor. And I'm gonna show you some stuff on what I did here. So first of all, this is the product I'm using. It's the Anthem STR. We did a review on this several years back. This is state of the art. It's a great two channel preamp. I have the STR matching amplifier as well. This is what Arc Genesis looks like with their microphone. It comes with its own microphone and a stand. And the great thing about this is if you network the processor and you network your computer on the same network, you could do your room correction through your computer and you don't even have to have the product in the same room as the speakers. And that's a huge advantage for anybody that's setting up a rack in a different location of the house and they have their speakers in their primary listening room. And now you don't have to run a long microphone cable. You just plug a USB microphone into your laptop that's on the same network as your Anthem receiver, processor, whatever you have that has Arc Genesis built in. And as long as it's on the same network, you can calibrate from anywhere you want. That's awesome. So the first thing I wanted to show you is I took a measurement of the Revel F328 Beryllium speakers in my room at the listening position. I smoothed this measurement out because I wanted to see the overall level from 20 to 20 kilohertz. And I overlaid it with the target curve for Harman for their subjective listening preferences. You wanna basically have elevated bass response with some tapering off high frequencies. So as you can see here, as you get below 100 hertz, we're very bass deficient here. We're a good six or seven dB bass deficient. And I heard this, without even taking a measurement, I thought to myself, I need to boost the bass, probably a good four or five dB. That's what my initial guess was. And that's basically what we're seeing here. But I wanted to see if I could just maybe get rid of some peaks. You can't get rid of, you really can't get rid of nulls in a room with room with uh, EQ. That you have to do with multiple subs or passive room treatments. And I do plan on doing the passive room treatments in this room. And I'll be going over that in a separate video. But I wanted to share with you my screen. I wanted to show you the post calibration Anthem Arc Genesis, how you could get the most out of the system with just doing some little alterations here or there to the settings. I will do a separate video on starting from the beginning to the end on how to do Anthem room correction and how to set it up. But this is just kind of a post calibration thing to explain all the different settings. And recently Anthem has upgraded their user interface and it's much easier to use. It was always easy to use. It's one of my favorites, but it's really intuitive now. I wanna show you this. I'm gonna share my screen here. And let us open the file called Revel. So what this is doing now is it's finding the file. It's up. It's checking with the processor that it's connected to. And here we go to Adjust Settings. So if you normally just open Anthem Arc as the program itself, it's going to think you're going through the calibration all over again, and it's going to ask you to plug in your mic and do all that stuff. 
the the way around that is you save your file after you're done calibrating and you open that file and here you can see the baseline so the uh, blue one is the left speaker and the red one is the right speaker and that's at the listening position and i got to give um anthem credit their measurements are actually pretty accurate they're smoothed of course but they are representative of what I see when I use REW and I do my own measurements. And you can't say that that's the case with a lot of room correction systems. For example, Odyssey's target before and after curve looks nothing like reality. So I got to give credit to Anthem for actually having a more basis of reality of what they're measuring and what they're showing you through their GUI. So if you want to go and edit this stuff, you go into the adjust targets. And I want to go over what all of this stuff means. So again, we have the red and we have the blue, and these are the measurements. And I want to show you basically this black curve is my target curve. It's my room gain curve. So Harmon, I mean, I'm sorry, I get Harmon confused sometimes. Um, Anthem typically recommends, I think, a gain setting of 3 dB. And it depends on your room, really. I find boosting it up a few dB more than that can be good if, as long as the base is flat. So just at a zero level, it's not going to change the base level at all. So if we bump this up to 3 dB, you can see the level rising. And the center frequency is basically where the gain starts happening. So the higher you go, the wider the bandwidth it's going to boost those levels. I typically don't like boosting that high of frequency. We mostly need help, you know, in the 100 hertz and below range. So I would recommend to you stay at around 200 hertz or less. Then they have a deep bass boost. Let's try to say that three times. Anyways, the deep bass boost will allow you to do a, an additional gain at the very low frequencies. And then this is the cutoff frequency where it does that gain. So 20 hertz all the way up to 75 hertz. So one thing I want to caution you guys on when you start adding all these gains, don't over gain your system because you're either going to run out of amplifier power or you're going to over exert those drivers and possibly either blow them out or bother them out or damage them. You don't really want to boost that much. In addition to that, the very low frequency gain I don't recommend doing it if your speakers aren't a true full range speaker. So in the case with the Rebels, their usable base is around 25 hertz and up. So they really can't play much at all below 25 hertz. So if I start boosting this thing at 15 hertz, I'm not going to get a whole lot out of it. These are not giant speakers. These are not like my reference speakers in my theater room that are flat down to like 12 hertz. So I don't really recommend doing too much deep bass boost. I think I did on my curve... I did it around 40 hertz and I added a dB or two just because I wanted that little extra impact. No problems there. The tilt level, that's basically a shelving filter at very high frequencies. I typically don't like to do a uh, correction above a few hundred hertz anyway, so I'll leave that at zero. Go back down here. It's a little tricky sometimes to get it zeroed out. There we go. And that's the frequency, of course, where you start the shelving response. Now, the other thing you got to watch is Anthem defaults a high pass filter on your speakers, even if they are large. And they're doing that to protect your woofers. So, what this is, is you can adjust the slope and the frequency where the high pass filter is applied. You can see how the bass is changing when I do that. Now, in my case, I did not employ that shelving filter. I just left it flat. I mean, the speakers themselves are very mechanically limited below 25 hertz, and I just didn't want to add more to that. Then, unless you're adding a subwoofer to the system, you probably want to leave this flat, or if you just think you have uh, bookshelf speakers that can't handle the bass, then you can go and add a high-pass filter. The other nice thing about this is if you're running a turntable in your system and you don't have a subsonic filter, I think the STR actually has a subsonic filter built in if you want to turn it on, but some of the Anthem products don't. You can kind of do that here. You could create your own subsonic filter to get rid of the, the flutter and all that other stuff that happens mechanically with turntables. And you can see here, I'm basically putting a high pass filter at very low frequencies. Move that over and you can see the response there. But like I said, I'm just using flat. Now, the maximum correction is basically how far you want to do your room correction on your system. 
it goes actually they go full bandwidth when arc first came out i think it limited it limited at five kilohertz so now they're allowing you to do full bandwidth correction my argument there is if you start out with good speakers you shouldn't need to do a lot of digital eq to those speakers um at the listening position at least above a couple of hundred hertz i usually limit the correction to about 500 hertz you could do it to taste but i wouldn't go too much above 500 hertz so that's basically how you just do your little tweaks and of course you then you save the settings which i'm not going to do now because i already have things pretty much optimized the way i want them to be so i want to show you i did some smoothing on these measurements just to make you see all the different what really happened after I did the before and after. So the red curve or the pink curve is before I ran arc and you can see the base levels are lower. And then this is after arc. So it helped fill out a little void here and uh, the base levels have boosted up several DB here. So I went from 83 to about 87, about four DB. And I could hear the difference. I mean, it made a visceral difference uh, in my music. It, the bass sounded much fuller. I wanted to just show you a little bit more detail. I did this review on the Anthem STR back at the Audioholics uh, showcase home, my first house where I had a theater room. And I ran ARC before it was the Genesis, so it wasn't quite as pretty. And you can see here, it shows you all the measurements, the front left speaker, the front right speaker, and then it does like the uncorrelated, or uncorrected room response versus the corrected room response with base management because I had multi-sub in there. So I had a lot of stuff going on in the other system. But I want to show you just how it does work. So you look at this graph here. It's left is the red with no arc and green is with arc. And you can see with arc, it filled up a little, I boosted a little bit of a void here. That's actually quite a big boost, but I do have a lot of headroom in my theater room system. It fixed some of this area and I added some very low, ultra low frequency here, some bass boost here because my speakers, my RBH speakers are flat down to like 12 Hertz so they can handle that. So you could see that the before and after use an arc room correction. And I think I even did a um, bolt speakers playing at the same time I measured them. So this is the, the red is before you can see I have a peak here that I knocked down a little bit that got rid of that, that heaviness in the bass. You really want flat base, elevated base is good. You want it to be flat. You can elevate it as long as it's flat. If it has a lot of bumps and dips, it's not so good when you elevate it there. So in this case situation, this was just my two main speakers. I didn't have multiple subs playing at the same time to smooth out all these suck outs. Of course, when you add the subs, you could fill these nulls, but that's a topic for another video. I just basically wanted to show you a little overview on how cool Anthem Arc is. And let me go back to getting that out of there. So yeah, guys, I mean, if you have an Anthem product and you're not using its room correction, I highly recommend that you do. Always get your base levels right. Base is 30% or more of the experience. And like I said, when I hooked up these with these Revel speakers, I was like, man, I just, the base is not great. But now that I've used positional EQ, I moved the couches around, I moved the speakers around, and I used Anthem Arc to boost the low frequencies, I'm getting a much fuller sound than when I set these up a few days ago. Now, even though this room is bad, it's echoey, and it's, there's a lot of surfaces, the fact that this is such a good speaker still gives me a lot of enjoyment in the sound. So they're still very good tonal matching in the sound there's good sound staging there's good separation of instruments when you have a good speaker it's a little bit more forgiving in a bad room not the bass of course the bass the room dominates the bass on what you're hearing so you really need to get the room right or you need to get add subwoofers in the room or you need to work on positional eq there's a lot of things you need to do to get the bass right but above the bass frequencies, even though this room isn't great, the speakers still sound phenomenal. So that's a tribute to Revel. It's a good speaker design. So I hope you guys found this video useful. Please thumb it up. Make sure you subscribe. And um, we're going to be having a lot more stuff happening in the Audioholics Smart House. Here's a little picture here for you. I'm going to be adding some more videos to that playlist soon so you can check out what we're doing. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioholics. 
And um, we'd like to thank all you guys for all the support you guys have done in 2020. And now we're in a new year and we appreciate you guys staying on with us. And uh, please give me some comments down below if you're using Anthem Arc Room Correction. What's your experience with it? Are you getting good results? I'd like to hear your stories about how you calibrated your system using this kind of room correction system. And until next time, my friends, keep listening. <laughs>